What's up guys? Welcome to an exclusive Last Island the Survival Server Creation Tutorial, the complete edition. If you are new to the channel, welcome. And if you're not new, welcome back. Don't forget to like and subscribe so I can keep bringing you this amazing content. It honestly means the world to me and is the reason I go out of my way just to give you videos like this. See, this video is going to be a full, put together, more in-depth version of the server creation tutorial part 1 and 2 that I had already released. I felt I didn't go over things enough and I needed to give you a more full on look at how I did my server and how to work around the creation tool. I want to get you more comfortable with using it and setting it up so you can have a fun server for you and your friends to play on. So if you didn't pay attention to the clip before, I'm giving away $25 to the winner of my server via gift card or PayPal. See I know that's not a lot of money but it came from my own pocket. And honestly, who doesn't want money just to play a game? It has no admin. I own the server but I'll only be on there to monitor, monitor suspected cheaters and maybe play myself a little bit just for fun. I spent a lot of time, many, many hours inside the creator trying to bring you advanced version of the last island. You know, I wanted, I wanted you to have a, an expansion pretty much is what I'm, I'm going for, like the perfect expansion of this game to make it more interesting. So please let me know what you think about this video or my server in the comments below. And all the links in the server info will be also in the description. But anyways, I'm Alan the Guide, your host, and let's jump right into it. So basically I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to start this off and I thought like the perfect thing I could do is something I get in the comments constantly and I get a lot of messages about how do I make somebody an admin in my server. So this is a really easy concept. First thing you want to do is go to your friend's profile, find him in your friends list, just click on his name and uh, you will see an ID number. You want to copy that ID number down, type it in your phone or write it on a piece of paper, whatever you got to do. Make sure you keep that number and then you go in here top left in your server opening settings. You click that, it shows your server on the list, go to set server, and then right here in this bar you wanna type your friend's ID number and then hit add. As soon as you do that, as soon as, the next time that they spawn inside your server they will have admin commands and they can do the same thing that you can do. Um, I do recommend that you choose somebody that you are really, really friends with or somebody you really trust because they can mess your server up, they can do a lot of things to spam your server and literally make you just want to start from scratch and reset and that really sucks when especially when you have badges dropping and you know a whole server set or you're four or five days in and you don't want to reset your server so just make sure you have somebody you you trust because for example they can spawn four five six freights and a bunch of drops all at once and that's cool and all that those do disappear but that same time the next day it's going to spawn those same exact four or five drops in the freights all over again it goes on a timed event. So when you spawn those things, they constantly come back, constantly come back. And there's nothing you can do about it because it's set now. Since you've spawned them at those times, the, it remembers that and it always respawns. So the next day you come in, you might have four or five freights uh, in the water, plus the ones that are already timed in the game that you can control with timed events. So just like I said, make sure you have somebody you trust because they can sabotage your server. So I'm basically gonna be going over all these things in sections. So the first thing I'm going to go over, obviously, is basic parameters. On the basic parameters page, it's a very important page because this basically is the, the whole core of your server. This, this is what gets your uh, server started, and this is how people find your server. So right off bat, your battle name, you want to make it something enticing, something that's not like everybody else's, uh, something to draw people in so they actually want to click your uh, server and join it. So you want to make your battle name something cool. Uh, I don't really have a recommendation of how you want to make it. I mean, if you have a 10 times or 100 times server, you could put all that, but a lot of people already have that. So I like to change it up. I called mine the true RPG survival. So people would see something different than everything else and maybe want to click on it. And then the pop-up description, I feel like is very important. This is how you can tell, uh, do you have an admin of your server? Are you looking for admins for your server? What kind of mining you have? How many backpack slots? You can put whatever you want in this game. Um, and you can make it like uh, I say I have a whole custom game like how mine is and you know whatever whatever it is this is what people see before they actually start the, the server and, and join it so you want to make this enticing so people want to see it um, your tag is it a role playing server is a battle server is it a badge server like basically is a is it more of a role playing like Diablo style like mine where there's a lot of loot to get there's a lot of drops there's a lot of cool things in it is it a strict PvP server? Are you just wanting a lot of battle and people killing each other constantly? Or is it a normal, like, badge server where you're just kind of having a normal server with the badge drop? 
Um, battle restriction, I, I don't really mess with that. I just put it on all platforms. I, I mix server all platforms. I don't really know how that... I, I honestly think that just is if against PC players or iOS, Android, because I know you can play on the computer too, but I just put it on all platform because I don't really care. Um, your home loot restriction, your PvP restriction. Uh, do you want a restriction on uh, being able to have people uh, get into your house or not? Uh, you can put it at limited time, just kind of like ranked, and it'll go at a, a specific time. You can raid people or not. Um, PV, PvP restriction, same thing as that. Do you want no restriction? People can kill people all the time. Do you want a specific time where they can kill people, or do you just want to ban PvP, period? So basically, I don't really touch none of these. I just leave them on no. I don't want a restriction. I'm not uh, I'm not trying to play like ranked. Uh, I like to raid people anytime I want to. Uh, no PvP restrictions. You can shoot people whenever you want to. Uh, my death drop, I leave on regular because I when you kill somebody, you want to pick up loot. Yeah, well, Obviously, I'm not going to put it on something where you kill somebody, spend all that uh, ammo and time, and then they don't drop anything. That's like one of the crappiest feelings. So I leave that on regular. Battle members is how many people you want in the server. And obviously, I believe the default is 100 what it starts at. Because let me let me see, I'll just put it 101. I believe it's it's just 100. Yeah, so 100 is default, so you can only put less than that. Battle password, if you want it to be a private server where you need a password to get into. Um, you have delete time. That's important. Um, 1,209,600 seconds is exactly two weeks and seconds. So basically, this is what you uh, when your server is going to stop and reset. So if you want it 30 days, you obviously want to do double what I have here. So it would be 2 million, what, 418,000 or no, 419,200 or something like that. But you want to put that in seconds. So if you want your server seven days, go on Google and type uh, seven days in seconds. And that's the number you're going to want to put, put in the delete time. And that'll be the time when your server resets and it's done. So you get 30 days when you purchase a server. So you can divide that on how you want. I like to do two weeks in two weeks. So I feel like the server lasts longer. It's more like how the game name is 15 days. It's more 14 day survival. But... You go to uh, Battle Zone here. I don't really mess with that. That's if you want to do a strict PvP server. You'd go to Guide, go to Other Search, 1, 2, and 3. Military Base, Airport, and Bandit Camp are the location ID numbers. And basically, you want to stick that here in the Battle Zone if you want them to only spawn there. They don't leave there. And that would be a server where you give, you would have a lot of loot already spawned there, or you'd have them spawned with a bunch of loot and armor on them already. And it would be strict PvP, and it would just be killing each other over and over again. No uh, no building, none of that. It would just be literally fighting each other. So if you want a server like that, Battle Zone, you would just change it to 1, 2, or 3, and it would be a strict uh, PvP server, uh, more or less. Uh, respawn protection, I believe, is how many seconds uh, do they have uh, invulnerability, or invincibility, I guess I could say, uh, to, uh, to death, uh, as they respawn. So if you kill them and they come back, how long do they, uh, in seconds, do they have to stay alive before they can be killed again? So um, the anti-cheat anti verification, I don't know if it actually works. I feel like this game has a lot of hackers, so I feel like their anti-cheat uh, does not work. So I always check it regardless just because, just, you know, just to feel safe. Uh, ban show weapon skins. Do you want uh, the weapon skins to show in-game or not? So if they have weapon skins and all that, do you not want them to... Say you don't want anyone to have skins at all and you just want it to be a normal game, you can ban it right there. You just click it. If not, just leave it alone. <clears throat> don't refresh official supply. So basically, after you've, after the drops and the fray and all that stuff go by, they won't respawn. It'll, it'll just completely be gone. So it'll be anything custom that you spawn. So you can spawn when you want it to. And that, that'll fix the problem I, I mentioned before. Say you wanted uh, to spawn stuff at, at certain times that you wanted it to spawn, you'd be able to make it so that after it spawns the first time, it never comes back, and then you can spawn it on the time you want it to. But that's, uh, I don't like I said, I don't really mess with a lot of this stuff. I'm just kind of explaining uh, it the best I can because I don't, I don't really use these things. Uh, what is the next one? Uh, forbid or plant refresh. That's the same thing as the one before. That's what basically all these are. Uh, basically, when you collect berries or, you know, you destroy a, a, a rock or some kind of ore, will it be able to respawn after it's uh, been destroyed or will it not be? You know, so if you check that, it, it basically is not going to respawn. I'm just twisting my words all up. 
But uh, forbid repair mechanism, same thing. After when it starts getting destroyed, are you able to repair something? If you don't want them to be able to repair something, you hit that. So they will never be able to repair. They'll always have to keep crafting or finding new stuff. Uh, limited time supplies switch. Uh, or no limited time supplies. I believe that that one, uh, that's one I want to test myself. I believe that is for food because uh, I've noticed in ranked, I don't really play any other kind of mode, but uh, in ranked, uh, food does not uh, deplete. You know, they have a refrigerator, but what's the point of a refrigerator if your food always stays good? So I think that just makes it so your food actually has like a health bar and it will actually go bad at a certain period of time. But um, let's go to the next one, ban official plans. I believe that bans uh, the official uh, recipes that they have in the game and the official guns, all the regular guns and stuff in game, and it just makes it the custom ones you've added. Uh, ban radiation mechanism. That literally is what it says. It bans radiation, so you don't need masks, and you can go anywhere on the map or military base without worrying about dying of radiation if you don't have a mask. Um, forbid system building refresh. I believe that just makes it so buildings don't refresh back in game after they've been destroyed. And I, I don't know why it means system buildings. So I'm not too, like I said, I don't mess with these too much, so I'm not 100% sure what that is, but it whatever it is, it doesn't refresh after it's destroyed. So uh, battle record board, I've clicked this, and it never seems to show up for me because I, I guess it's not like ranked. It doesn't show the points you get because there, there are no points from the freights and stuff in social servers. So that I don't think works. Um, don't refresh official monsters. So basically... After you've killed a monster that's the normal monsters in game, not the ones that you've added, um, it won't refresh. So if you want a game that's just nothing but your custom monsters, every time one of the monsters that are already in game die, they won't come back. And it'll just be what you have spawned and what you have on time spawns. So if you want a game that's literally custom all you, nothing that the game has made itself, then you can do it that way. So um, Force Trade Zone Resurrect, I'm not 100% sure what that does. Uh, honestly, you can try that yourself and uh, maybe let me know in the comments what that does because I don't mess with it. Um, forbid battle supplies. Uh, I, I'm guessing that bans battle supplies of, of some sort. I'm guessing that uh, maybe the sponsorship bans them from using that. Not really sure how that works as well. But uh, like I said, I basically went over the, the main key and important things that you need on here. You can mess with all these other little things down here. Let me know in the comments what you've done and how it worked for you so I can get a little better understanding myself because, like I said, I don't really mess with these things. They're not needed on my server. I want a full-on survival server, so I don't want to ban anything like radiation or any of that crap because I want it to be full survival. But that's basic parameters. All right, for the battle parameters, it's pretty self-explanatory. Basically, what number do you want times the irregular amount that you get? So for the wood multiplier, I put times 15. So whatever it is, I don't know the exact number. Uh, when you hit a tree, it'll be times 15 from what the normal amount that you'd get. Same with the stone, the iron ore, the sulfur, the, the whole nine yards, the, the cloth multiplier, uh, spares, how many spares will you get? Uh, say if you hit a barrel, I, I don't remember how many it is. It's like three or five that you'll get for per barrel that you you hit you could do it times 15 instead they'll get 50 or 60 you know uh xp multiplier how much xp times the normal xp will they get it's like a self very self-explanatory the item stack limit um i like to put that up as high as possible just for the fact of i don't like having a cramped backpack because i can only carry 2,000 wood instead i'd rather be able to carry uh 99,999 wood per stack so it saves a lot of inventory space uh, backpacks, backpack slots, I believe they only give you uh, 35, something like that. I put it up to 150. I'm, I believe you can put that up to 99992, but uh, I like to put it at like 150, so it's it's still a decent amount, but it's not overdoing it, especially with the stack limit being so high. Uh, turf cabinet members, you can only put max three. I try to do four, and it won't allow you to. So max three members, anything less is fine. Um, build limit uh, starts at 1,000. I put it at 2,000 so that you can build twice as much uh, compared to the regular maps where you can only build up to, like I said, 1,000. So now you can build 2,000 pieces. Uh, smelting time, I put down to one second per you know, smelt. So it'll be like uh, one iron ore uh, will take one second to turn into one iron bar. So something like that. Uh, death box time is uh, not 100% sure. What that is, I'm I'm think I'm guessing that's uh, how long you uh, have to wait before respawning. 
I'm guessing. I'm not 100% sure what that is. I don't, like I said, I don't mess with that. So that's everything else I mess with. I don't really mess with that at all. The weapon and shield, um, I'm guessing is uh, armor you start with, like the, the amount of armor you you naturally come with on you, I'm guessing. Like I said, those last two I don't really mess with, but everything else is your multipliers and everything. That's the main part. Uh, the recipe book, do you want them to start with every recipe already uh, unlocked and have uh, they can have? They don't have to look for recipes. Um, if so, you would click that and they'd have all recipes right off start. Uh, instant build, do you want it to be a timed build or do you want them to be able to just build stuff like instantly right when they craft it? So that's instant build. And that I like to put that on because I don't like... It, you know who likes waiting to, to to craft things and build things it's it's annoying so i like to put that on so you don't have any wait time for that but uh literally self-explanatory very easy section so that's battle parameters all right now we're on to the resource parameters very easy section to understand obviously the green card blue card and purple card refresh rates the green blue room and the purple room refresh rates and then your drop your freighter your helicopter and your tank refresh rates these are all in seconds so just make sure if you want it to be every two hours, every six hours, every five hours, whatever it is, you convert the hours to seconds, and then you stick them in these blanks. And uh, like I said, very self-explanatory, not hard to understand. Uh, the metal drop time, I erased it so you can see the minimum is, is 600 or 600,200 seconds. So whatever that equals out to, I'm not going to go and do the math if you want to know, but that's the minimum amount of time. And then uh, maximum, I don't know what it is, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you can put it pretty high. But uh, again, very easy section to understand. So that's uh, resource parameters. All right, so now we're gonna get into special parameters. Uh, the first one it starts you off with right here on the drop down menu on the right is uh, your shop config. The shop config is the one that shows up on your sponsorship. If you have a sponsorship, you pay the $2.99 or $1.99 a month thing to get the sponsorship and the, the items every day, the food and the resources it gives you. You can also add things to that uh, into the sponsorship pack and they can buy the things that you choose to put on the, the item list. So say I wanted to put, <clears throat> let's go down here and we can literally put anything. Let's put a helicopter chassis. We wanted to put that in the sponsorship. You copy the item ID from the guide there. You paste it in there, purchase amount. You put it for whatever you want it to be. I'll say that and we'll put it a hundred uh, tickets. And you, uh, sale price, you get, uh, no, purchase amount, what? Oh, yeah, purchase amount, you get one. Sale price, 100. So that's basically how you set that up. It's very easy. You can choose it for it to be on the sponsorship or no, if you don't need it to be on the sponsorship and you just want it on the regular uh, shop configuration. But uh, simple, very explanatory on that one. Uh, let's go down the list here. Let's go to server opening supplies. Now, see, I already have some items in here. Um, I believe the... Yeah, the one that says uh, 1,097,000, I, th I believe that is, or 10,097,000, whatever the hell it is. Um, that one with the amount of one is a special gun, a custom gun that I made, which you'll see in the unit library when I get there. And uh, it's got down there item 53002. That would be the one for pistol bullets, and you get 60. So basically this is when the server starts and they just join your server for the very first time, what items will they spawn with? So I, I just put some simple things like some... Uh, I don't know if those were bandages. I think they were cl uh, cloth outfits that I, I gave them. So this is literally what they start off with. So if they die, you'd go down to this next one, resurrection supplies. So basically, this is what they would get when they came back to life. As soon as they spawned back from being dead, they would uh, start with the items that you put in here. Same thing. You just keep hitting the plus button for whatever items you want to go in here. You go in the guide, go to item, find it, copy it on the right, whatever it is, paste it and then you put the amount. And then every time they die and they come back to life, they will get that same item with the amount that you gave them. So let's move on. Down here on tips, I'm not sure what this exactly is. I don't think if anyone else sees this or if there's a special button that they can uh, click to see, the, see this, but I think this is just particularly for you as a server creator to put your notes in. This is where you can save all your special uh, item IDs and all that I'm guessing this is like your your personal space to put all your notes for your uh, your server. So if like I said, uh, when you're when you're doing this and you're making all these different units and custom IDs for uh, different armors and recipes and all that, they each have their specific ID. You have to remember it's not going to be in the normal guide because it's a custom item. So when you make something, you have to remember that ID 
to be able to spawn it in for somebody or if you wanted to put it in drops and uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. But I, I'm guessing this is a spot to put all your notes. But uh, pretty much that's, I believe, all that you need to know for the most part for uh, special parameters. Okay, so this is the part of the tutorial that starts to get a little bit tricky and takes a little bit more time and effort to uh, get a custom server. So uh, basically you go in here in the unit library and I'm just gonna go down the list and show you everything I, I've added to the game. I have a lot of stuff. I'm gonna explain how to do this. It took a long time, very long time to get all this to where it's at, get all the stats uh, balanced out and even and it's it took a long time let's just put it that way it took a lot longer than you'd expect but uh a lot of work went into this and i'm basically going to show you how to do the basics on how i got most of this stuff going and then from there hopefully you'll be able to create your own items and have your own drops and everything so uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into this so i can go into a blank uh let me oops let me go to record. Let me try using that one, the official battle server one. All right, cool. All right, this is all blank, and we're going to start from scratch. So to make an item, you just go in here. Uh, unit type you can't change. You just go select it to, uh, a template, item and material. That ID number right there, that one right there that you see, 1 million, that's going to be your very first item. So wherever you start, it's all going to go in order. 1 million, 1 million, 1, 1 million, 2, 1 million, 3, etc. And that's going to go for every item that you make in order. So what I like to do, when I did mine, I, I went all the way down the list. Items, then I went to food and meds, then I went to recipes. So when I made my items, I knew exactly uh, what item numbers were, guns, which ones were meds. And uh, a good key strategy that I did is uh, I have a computer in front of me, and I like to open a notepad up and type everything in, um, like basically the, the description of e each item I make. Uh, if it's an item that gives you health, how much health it gives you. So that way, when I make the next item past that, I can make it a little bit better than the item before that, you know what I mean? To give you different variety of different items and different weapons uh, with different stats. Some are better than others. Some have better accuracy. Some have better, you know, range. Some have, you know, just different variety, basically. So just make sure that when you're making these items and the recipes and gear, you have it all written down somewhere or typed up, or like I said, use that note uh, pad area and special parameters and write it all down because you're really gonna need it when you are making all this stuff. So let's go ahead and make an item. What I like to do right off bat to, so I know what I'm making, I go down here to icon model and I basically just pick an item off this list. Say I wanted to make, I don't know, um, I want to make this cloth a piece of another item. I could call this, instead of cloth, I'll call it a pelt or something. You know, even though it's not, I should have picked the, the hides more of like the pelt of this. But you, you go and call it that or whatever. Oops. Go and name and call it that. Call it whatever you want. Give it a little description. It has to have a description or it won't let you save the item. I'm just going to put something random. Uh, you get to choose the quality of the item. So this is what quality they will see when they pick it up. Is it a normal white item, a slightly better green item? Is it a blue item, a rare item, gold, and then red obviously being the best. So like I said, I went from smallest to biggest when it came to quality. So I made one item, then made a one that was better, and that would be green. Made an item that's a little bit better than that, made it a blue, and so on. So I thought that was kind of cool. You can make the quality of the items that you want, so you can make different varieties of the same item. So it gives you a better... Uh, a better chance of getting people on the server and more loot drops and more things for people to look forward to finding and crafting. So I do that. Um, stacks is how much it can stack up to um, each stack. So I same thing, I just stack it to 9999 or whatever the hell you want to put it as. Uh, you go down here, is it sellable? I always put yes, just because unless it's an item that you want to be a specific drop item only where it can be crafted or it can be crafted but it can't be traded, you would uh, put no on sellable so cannot sell but and then you can also in here this is optional uh you can choose a specific thing that it's only sold for so people can only buy it for a certain thing and uh items sold for amount and this is where you would put uh the amount that it's sold for of that custom item id so say for some reason you wanted it to be it costs 
hide to make this. You would put that in the item. All right, let's say a thousand. So a thousand, it would cost a thousand hide uh, that this thing could be sold for, this pelt. So, and then like I said, you can use pelt as a piece of an item to make a, or as an item that's part of a recipe to make a different kind of armor. So basically these items on here aren't really for usage as in like meds or anything like that because it has its own section, but these items are basically used for parts to make other weapons and, and custom items and custom other things. So you can use their, basically all their little icons and call them different things and say instead of these being cards, you wanted to call them something completely different and this was used to build a special chest that had more slots in it. You would have a green slot and a, a blue one that had like 20 more slots and the purple one would have 40 more slots and you need these to, you know, make the box. Basically it's just a piece of the recipe itself. So, like I said, it's going to get a little confusing. I'm going to try to do my best to show you on here what I do. Uh, food and meds, same thing. You go in here, select template, food, and uh, oh, same thing too. I'll show you that as well. You can choose food, water bottle, or meds on here, whatever you want to make. We're just going to make some food real quick. You can pick one of the icons, like I said, call this uh, strawberry jam. There we go. The description fills a thousand hunger or whatever you uh, fill it for. Uh, how much it stacks, the quality again. Is it a usable item? You always wanna use yes. If it is a usable item, if it's a food that you want them to eat, you always wanna make sure that is checked yes. Otherwise it'll be an unusable item. And at that point, again, like I said, it'll just be a piece of a recipe to build something else or a useless item that you just wanna throw in the game for shits and giggles. So is it sellable? Again, yes or no, put that down. This will show how much HP it, it gives. So you can put a minus in here if you want. If you want it to take, say you have, a, like I put a stimulus shot. It's got question marks on it. Um, that has a chance to hurt you or it can heal you. You know, you never know. That's why it's question marks. But you can literally go in here, say if you wanted it to be minus 200 if they used this and they ate this, it would be it would be just like that. But if you wanted it to give 200 health or 2,000 health when uh, they ate it, you'd put it obviously uh, positive not negative same with the hunger same with the thirst very self-explanatory on that i don't think i need to go over that too much more um let's get out of the foods and meds because like i said it's the same thing for the meds you just go in here put a name put a description like i said since i haven't made any items this number up here the id number hasn't changed but if this was my third item it would be actually like that it would look like that when i made it it'd be one million three same thing you'd go down here fill in all these description the name of it what quality is it, the stacks, pick your icon for the meds. Do you want it to be like, look like the stem shot on here or this box? Anything you want it to look like. Is it usable? Yes. Sellable? Yes or no. Again, what is it sold for? If it is uh, sold for something and how much? And again, right down here, how much HP would it give you? Would it give you hunger and would it give you thirst or would it take it away? Again, simple. I don't really need to go over that. Okay, this is where I really do need to go over though. This is a very important part. Because uh, the recipes, if you want somebody to uh, find one of your items in game, say they killed a monster and it dropped uh, one of your special guns, they're not going to be able to craft or fix that gun that you put in game unless you make a recipe for it. So I'm going to go and skip recipe for a second. I'm going to go here in gear. And say this has helmet, armor, leg guard, shoes, and the masks. The masks are basically just two different kinds of... Um, radiation mask you i just put one down and made it a little bit lower of a regular uh radiation mask and then there's like another uh icon for it the second one right here and i just made it like a super rad mask like even if you go in the rooms you won't take any rad so that's basically what that is but we're gonna go ahead in here and we're gonna make a helmet just to show you what i mean so we're gonna call this uh um let's call it a cop helm just because it kind of looks like a SWAT helm. That's probably better. It looks like a SWAT helm, kind of. So we would call it whatever you want. Like I said, put a description. Uh, helmet. Oops. Go ahead and do that. Same thing. Quality. Uh, the durability. Uh, you basically just want to put the durability at whatever you want it to be. Uh, what I did basically when I made all my uh, gear and my weapons, like I said, I did the same thing I did with my items and my foods. I made the grades go up as I made items. So this, uh, the very first item that you make, I would recommend making it 
a little bit better than the steel armor. So see how much armor the steel has and how much uh, armor pen and all that other stuff that it has, uh, a defense for, against armor pen and all that. And what you want to do is you want to work on the next armor and try to make that above the steel armor. So that way it just goes so on and so on, higher and higher and higher and better armor and better armor. So they get to still make the orig original cloth, hide, bone, iron, and steel armor, but then the next armor in line would be the SWAT helm, the SWAT armor, and then the next one in line would be whatever the next armor you make is. So you definitely want it to increase in quality, increase in durability, and increase in defense. So let's go down the list here. Uh, the icon models, like I said, there's quite a few armors to choose from. So this is the one I was talking about that's right after steel, called a SWAT helm, whatever you want to call it. Is it sellable? Um, the, uh, the item it's sold for or how much it's sold for. Uh, and this is right here. This is the stats I was telling you about. Uh, this is the increased uh, HP. How much HP will they gain when they put this item on? Uh, since it is a headpiece, does it boost head defense? Uh, does it increase body defense, which it shouldn't because it's a helmet? You'd obviously have body defense for armor and below. Um, on hit durability loss. Now, this is the amount of durability it loses when you're hit by somebody shooting at you or hitting you with something. So I always put that to one or multiple. Say uh, the better armor, um, like the best armor in the game, I make it like lose like two or three be just because it's so high quality and has such high durability that you do want it to get penetrated a little bit more. So it gives people the incentive that they need to fix and repair their armor or build new armor and you know it makes more fun in the game because obviously if they're invincible and you can't take them down and their armor never breaks there's no fun and no survivability in that so uh, the repair materials um, this is something else that you can change around you can add so many of them right here uh, this is basically what it's going to cost to repair the item and also this is also going to tie into what it would take to craft the item because when you make it as a recipe you have to make uh, put these items in, these material IDs, to what you need it uh, need to craft the actual item itself. So uh, let's just go in here, fi uh, 530 right here. I believe that is, um, if I'm not mistaken, spares. So just say it took 300 spares and 5,004. I'm thinking that's iron ore. I'm not 100% sure. Let's make that 10. So this would be the first item in the list. This is how much it would cost. We're going to save that. There we go. You got the SWAT helm in here. So now, since the SWAT helm is made, we if you want them to be able to craft it and you want them to be able to fix it, or, or even in general be able to, say they just found the item and they didn't find the recipe, be able to throw it on the drafting table to get the recipe, you obviously have to make it. So we're going to go in here, we're going to make a recipe. Oh, let me, I, made a, I made a mistake. Let's go back to SWAT helm one more time. Like I said, this number would have changed if I saved all the items we've gone over. But what you do is you select the item you just made, Select the item uh, ID number. Go back up here to recipe. You're going to make a new recipe. You're going to call it SWAT Helm Recipe uh, Craft oops, SWAT Helm in the description. Put it, like, again, quality, whatever you need. But basically, you're going to go down here. After, like I said, I've gone over all these. Uh, craft page is what page you want it to show up on in the uh, actual uh, craft menu. So you can uh, choose where you want it to show up at. It's obviously going to show up in battle and weapons since it's an armor. Um, do you want it to show up on the uh, normal tab? Do you want it to show inside the craft menu if it's not unlocked? So do you still want it to be like blacked out with the lock symbol on it and still showing in the, the menu? Or you can put no. So in, until they find the item or, the, the, or get the recipe rather, it won't show up as uh, an item even in their, their log. So they won't see it in the recipe book. But uh, if you do want them to, to see it in the recipe book, regardless if they have it or not, you just hit yes. Uh, and unlock at start, do you want them to already have the recipe as soon as they start the game, or do they have to find the recipe or draft it? So I always put no because it's a custom item, and I want them to be able to find it, uh, spend items to draft it, and then craft it. You know, I want it the full, uh, the full survival feeling of it. Uh, battle level restriction it obviously goes up to 15 so you can choose if they have to be a specific level and get a certain amount of xp before they can craft something um, required crafting facility this is the, the workbench it's the only one they have and then you can choose do they need a, a level one workbench a two workbench or a three workbench um, single unit craft time this is the the item craft time how much does it take to make per per one item of this so we'll say it takes 10 seconds to make the helm 
again, this is where I was telling you about uh, the craft material ID. So it was like 5,009 or something like that. Or I don't remember what it was. Whatever that number was, uh, it might have been 9 or 8 or something like that. But whatever it is, you, you put the craft uh, material IDs in here. And these are going to be the items that they need to craft this particular armor. So, And then there's the craft material amount and so on. You just go down the list. And this is the very important part. We just copied the ID number for the gear. So to make the recipe work, you have to go right here and put that number in the craft product ID. So after they craft it, it's going to craft this particular item. That's why you need that ID in here. Then you put the amount they get when they craft it, which is one. You craft the experience, which again, you can put whatever you want. Um, say they get 2000 experience when they craft it. And then this is the recipe order. And if you see here, it says 1000 to 99999. You want to start it from there. This is the recipe orders. So what I did, you want to start it from what 1000 and then just work your way up. So the next recipe that you make would be 1001. Next recipe you make would be 1002. And you would just keep going per item that you make. But then after you have it, you just save it and boom, there it is. SWAT helm recipe, you got the SWAT helm. So that item, that's, it's the same thing with weapons. I'll go in here just because. Um, you can make obviously the, all these kinds of weapons, uh, action sniper rifles, bazooka, grenade launcher, the whole nine yards. You'll just have to experiment. It's all pretty much the same thing. There's not really a difference. So let's just say we wanted to make an AKM. Like I said, I go down here first, choose the icon that I want it to be. So just say I wanted this AKM right here. You call it whatever. You just call it the beast. Beast. Best. Uh, uh put best rifle. Whatever the hell. You, like I said, whatever you want to put in the descriptions, you it's your gun. So quality. Again, you pick something random. The durability. Like I said, I like I like I do. I just keep going up ranks and durability and HP defense and or attack uh, damage and all that with particular items as the grade goes up. So you just keep making these items, put the base damage, the amount of capacity it has in a mag, so how much uh, ammo it has per uh, clip. Uh, the weapon range, I believe 300 might be the highest, or I think it might even be just 200. No, 300 is. Let's see, 400. Yeah, 300 is the, the farthest range a gun can shoot. So anything 300 and under is all right. Is it a fully automatic weapon, or is it semi? Are you actually going to have to tap the, tap the shoot button, or can you just hold it down and spray? The single burst, uh, oop, I don't know why I just did that. Let's go back in here. All right. Anyways, I don't know why I just did that. All right, but anyways, we where were we? We're down here. Okay, so yeah, the single burst bullet amount. So basically this, this thing right here is how many bullets it's going to shoot out per shot. I thought this was the speed of the gun, like you could speed up the, you know, the amount of speed that it's shooting or the velocity, but it's not. It's how many bullets shoot out at the same time. So if I shoot once, it's only going to shoot one bullet. But if I shoot once, it's going to shoot two bullets and so on. You can go up to, it shoots 10 bullets per shot. So that's what that is. Do bullets fall? That's if you're shooting long range with snipers and you want like a drop on them, kind of like a Fortnite has. When you shoot a sniper rifle, the bullet drops. You can choose yes. And if you do, what is the gravitational like uh, acceleration? which that you're gonna have to kind of mess with and practice and keep going in and out of your server and testing these guns to see how much of a drop rate it has. I mean, I don't know, like put some kind of something you can kill far away and go way back and see how, how hard it is to shoot it from a long distance. Um, utilize bullet ID, same thing. You would go in the guide up here, go to item, find the bullet that you want it to have. Um, you go down here, nine millimeter bullet, whatever bullet you want it to shoot and you put that in and the default bullet ID, the utilized bullet ID would be like uh, the HE bullets. Uh, what other what other ammo can it use uh, besides the normal bullets that it's using? And you can uh, make it boosted ammo. That gives a little bit more damage. So uh, again, repair material, very self-explanatory. Put the ID number of the material that you want it to be. How much does it cost or, or how much is it going to take to repair it? And so on. You just go all the way down. But uh, that's how you make a gun. Again, you'd save it. Let me, because it messed us up. Let's go in here and go back. Choose a random one. Save and return. Boom. Then there's your gun. So now you have 
Uh, now you'd have to go in here in your recipe. Like I said, every item that you make that you want to be able to be crafted, drafted, and fixed, and uh, repaired, you have to actually go in here and make a recipe. And see, we already made a mistake. You have to go in your weapon, see how the ID number changed because it was the second one we actually saved. You copy that, go into recipe, start it, put your name, beast rifle, recipe, beast uh, craft, oops, craft, why can I type? Craft, recipe, or rifle, beast rifle. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, and then again, make the quality, the icon model. You obviously want to put it as the, the weapon one. Um, is it sellable? So on. Again, everything I've already showed you in the last one. And then that's what you would have to do. And then again, right here for the product ID, for it to actually craft that item, you have to put that in here, the amount, the amount of XP they get, and then the order. So it would be, in this case, 1,002. And then you would save. And now you have that second one. So you'd have to do that for every single item that you want to be able to, again, be crafted, drafted, or fixed. So you go in here, make all these items, uh, set them aside with their numbers, uh, type them up, whatever you need to do. And then what I did at the very end after I made all my gear, all my weapons, I went into the recipes and made each specific recipe for every single item. Uh, like if you have a, obviously there's what, four sets? of armor per uh no four things of armor per set so it's a helm uh a chest plate uh legs and then boots so for a full set of armor you have to make four four recipes for four items so if you have 12 new sets of armor you're gonna need uh 48 recipes so that's how that works so and that's only for gear if you made a bunch of weapons too and you made 30 weapons you need 30 recipes for those as well Unless you don't want them to craft it and you just wanted a dropped rare item to find and only find. Then you don't have to worry about that. But I hope that helped and that's pretty much how you make recipes and how you make gear uh, for your game and for your server. Uh, we're going to go down here to Monster. And uh, basically you go in here. Again, you select your te template. What do you want the monster to look like and have health like? And I thought it was kind of cool. They have horse in here and they have something called a money tree and a few other little things here, but you can basically just pick something random on here, all wandering infected. I go in here and I choose which, what I want it to look like, whatever one you want it to, to spawn look like. You name it again. Uh, I'm just gonna name it toxic. Uh, HP limit, how much health do you want it to have? Uh, obviously not that much. Give it a bunch of health. Uh, how fast do you want it to attack? Uh, when does it refresh after it's been killed? 250 seconds. I believe that all goes in seconds as well. Does it have head defense or body defense? Um, revenge expiration time is basically after you hit a monster and it starts chasing you, how long does it take before it decides it wants to turn around and stop chasing you? Uh, turning speed is how fast after you've hit it that it's going to turn around and fight you. Um, is it active? Does it walk around and attack people or is it not active and does it just stand in one place? Melee damage, obviously, is how much uh, damage that the monster is going to do to you. Roam radius is how far does it walk across the map. Does it stand in one spot or does it travel? Enemy lock distance is how far the uh, enemy can see you before it locks onto you. Uh, attack distance is how far it can hit you from when it's chasing you. Like, say it's like four feet away and it's still hitting you. That's because its attack distance is high. Uh, the follow-up hit distance radius is that following hit like the first hit it hits you and then it stops and you keep running that second hit uh, I don't know if you've ever noticed you'll be kind of far away from it and it still ends up hitting you a second time it's because that second hit uh, second hit distance radius is a little bit higher so that's how you do that uh, your counter attack distance I'm believing that's uh, when you're fighting them face to face how fast they can hit you with another quick one um, kill experience uh, is how much experience you get after you kill them uh, armor pen, obviously, is how much armor penetration they have. And then the drop pack ID, I will show you when we get to that. But that's how you would do that, and we would go ahead and save it. There's one of your first monsters. Now, this is where you, it gets interesting. So you'd go down in here and drop. You select new. Go to random drop pack first. That's what you're going to need first. So say I wanted to drop this SWAT helm. I wanted our monster to drop this. You go to this ID number, select it. Copy it, go into drop, go to 
random drop pack. It's gonna make a random drop pack ID right there. The system unit name, we're gonna call this uh, toxic, Ooh. toxic beast rifle drop or whatever you wanna call it. And then you put that item ID right here in the first slot. So that's our gun. The amount that they get, they're only gonna get one gun and the odds, it has to add up to 10,000. So since we only have one item in here, we're gonna stick it at 10,000. But if we had another item on here and we wanted to split it, uh, say we wanted to put another one right here, here. Let's just act like these are different. Uh, we're gonna act like these are uh, two different items. Oh, actually I can, I think I have, there we go. I have uh, another item, I forgot. So what we would do is we would make this, uh, where's it at? Item mount, okay, then we would make this 5K instead. We would split this 10,000, because it has to add up to 10K. So you put the item ID, the amount they get, and then the odds of getting it. So since there's two items here and they're both odds are 5,000 out of 10,000, that means they have a 50-50 chance of getting one or the other item from this drop. And after you get done with that, you go, I don't think there's anything at the bottom you need to do. Nope. So you can just see how many odds you can make. You basically can add so many things to this drop that, you, that could be a possibility for it to drop. So you can put all a different bunch of items that you make, four or five guns, a different gear and all this stuff that you want in here. And all you have to do is make sure that the odds section on these all add up to 10,000. So when you add all those odds and numbers up together, so if say you had six items, you'd wanna take 10,000 divided by six and then put that in your odds section because that'd be six items with the odds of whatever they are. So you have a sixth of a chance to get one of those items. Or you can make it even weirder. Like say between these two items, I wanted to give this a 7,000 chance to get and this only a 3,000 chance. So you have a 70% chance to get the first item and only a 30% chance to get the second item. So after you add all the items, the amount that they get, and then the odds of getting it, and it all adds up to 10,000, you can save, and there you go, there's your drop. So what you'd wanna do after it's saved, go to that random drop pack ID right here, select that, copy it, go back into your monster, click it, go all the way to the bottom, that drop pack ID, you insert that number right here, and then you save it. Oop, incorrect, monster drop ID. Why is that incorrect? Oh, that's why, okay. So no, after you make the random drop pack, you have to make a regular drop pack. And then what you do with that number is you add the random drop pack ID in here, call this toxic drop, and then these you don't have to worry about since they're all, uh, this This is only what it was guaranteed to drop. So like you can put an item ID in here, say I wanted, to, I believe this is wood, and say automatically I always want it to drop 100 wood. There are no chances, it just always drops 100 wood. You would put these items, so say you wanted a, a zombie to drop spares every single time and something else every single time it's killed no matter what, you'd put these items in here so, and then the amount they get. So there is no, you know, uh, chance of getting these items. It's a, it's a direct guarantee they get this. And then, like I said, you put the random drop pack ID here that we just made, and that'll be the random chance it gets something. And then you save and return that one. Actually, what you can do right here is take this, this drop pack ID, select it, copy that, save it. So now we have the random drop pack, the to toxic beast rifle drop, and now the actual drop itself, the toxic drop and you save that number, like I said, the drop pack ID, this one right here. Then you go back into your monster, scroll to the very bottom, enter that in here, paste, done, save. So now when this monster is killed, it's going to drop the toxic drop, which is the very first random, as a chance of getting 70% chance of getting that rifle and then, or, or the helmet, and then it has a 30% chance of getting the rifle. So that's how that would work. Now this is where it starts getting even more tricky. So after you have that, you want to, I believe, uh, let me see, draw pack. Okay, add incident. 
Uh, wait, there's got to be another. Let me go in here. Let me try test something real quick. Um, yeah, so after you have that, I believe... All right, so then we have the drop, we have the monster that drops it, and now, where is it at? I don't know why it's not showing it, but I'll show you something real quick. Ooh. On my server, when I go here and I go to use, and I go under the unit library, I have a second monster slot right here. And on the second monster slot, after I make a monster, it allows me to go in here, and this is how you drop the monster. This is how you p put a specific location. I don't, I'm not sure why it's not showing it on the other one. Let me go back in here and try to use it again. I know we didn't save any of this, so all our items are gone. But I'm just trying to figure out why it's not giving me a second monster slot after I made one. But I think after you make a few monsters, it should pop up with this little slot right here. On mine, there are two monster slots. One for creating it, and then this one right here. And when you have this one, you go into the template, you either have a fixed point refresh or a ranged refresh. A fixed point means it's going to only spawn in one area, and that's the specific area that you put. And a ranged refresh is going to be in a specific location around it. So we're just going to do a range just to show you this one. So that monster that we had just made before it erased, we would put that ID number right here of that monster we just made. It'd be like 1001. It's going to show up red because it's not in mine. But you'd put that number right there. This is the amount of it it's going to spawn. So do you want 100 of this specific monster to spawn? And if so, you know, you put that in here or say you only wanted 40. And then this is going to be the coordinates. So 3,007 and 4743. You uh, can choose whatever. Like I said, the best thing to do is probably go into the map. Uh, find certain areas on the map where you think you'd want that item to spawn or that particular monster to spawn and then write those uh, coordinates down. Come in here, make the drop, say I wanted it to uh, to be at airport. Then I would uh, toxic airport drop. Oh no, spawn. So it'd be a, the spawn of the actual toxic monster. And then, like I said, you'd want 40 of them or whatever you want it to be. You put the coordinates. And then this is the range within 1,000 meters of those 40 or 39 that it's going to spawn. So I, within 500 meters, it's going to spawn 39 of these monsters in that particular area. So that's basically how that worked. And then you would you'd hit save and return. But like I said, I don't have it in here. So it would, it would save it. And then after it's saved, it would end up in here. See, Meg location 1, Meg location 2, Meg location 3. There's Meg, the horse. So that's basically how that works. You would, uh, like I said, I don't know why that drop menu is not coming down after the monsters on the other one we did. But after you've made a bunch of monsters, it should have this little section here under it where you're able to spawn the locations of each particular monster that you want it to show up and where you want it to show up and how many. So I think that's pretty much that. Um, again, I, I showed you the drops and how to do that. Uh, the incident library is not really... Cool, too cool to use it's not anything in particular that i thought was insane or that cool but um in the incident library you can say uh basically uh if a specific unit dies or if you use an item or if you use an item within range of something else or a unit dies within range or a specific game time or you kill a, a unit or units within a certain range or you set off a circuit or current time of game so you could choose one of these things. This is a what if, like a uh, an incident, like it says. So if any of these things happen, it's going to set off a trigger. So so we're going to pick current time, say 12 hours, zero minutes. So 12, 12, every 12 hours, zero minutes in of, of current time, it's going to spawn. I don't think it gives you many, many things. Yeah, spe uh, specified position creates unit, random position creates unit, or your position creates unit. So at this time or whatever one you chose or the, if you use a specific item or which you can, like I said, make a special item and when they use it, this trigger will, will come off and it'll spawn a specific unit at a specific coordinate you want it to or it'll spawn at your location or it'll spawn randomly on the map. 
So that's basically what the instant library is. You can basically make triggers on, if you, if you make an item that you want a monster to spawn when they use it, this is how you would make that monster spawn when they use that particular item. So besides that, that's pretty much how you do everything in here. Uh, unit library, like I said, is just more tedious than hard because you have to make a recipe for, for every single thing that you make that you want them to be able to craft, draft, and uh, repair. So that's mainly the hardest part about this. But besides that, it's just being very tedious and over and over and over again work, just making new items and new armor uh, and balancing everything. Because more than anything, you need balance. You can't just have crazy ass armor with you know all kinds of HP and defense and stuff randomly with different sets and stuff and all over the place. And you know you gotta kinda put the lower set of armor on lower, uh, easier monsters to kill, and then the harder armor to get on harder monsters to kill, you know, to balance the game out. And obviously the same with the guns. If you have super powerful guns that do a thousand damage each, you got to make your monsters have a few thousand uh, HP and defense, so that way they're not easily one-shot. And uh, same with the armor. If you have armor that has 2,000 HP when you put it on and you have all this health points, you got to obviously have a gun that is able to kill that guy who has 2,000 health points. So you want to balance your guns and your armor depending on, you know, how your server is going to work out. But uh, anyways, that's uh, pretty much how you do everything on here. If uh, this helped you out at all, like, subscribe, comment. Uh, let me know if I missed anything, but I'm pretty sure I went over everything that I went over in part one and two just a little bit easier. And uh, pretty much that's it. That's the end of the video. And I hope to see you guys on the server if you guys are looking forward to winning $25 just to play a free game, go ahead and check that out. Like I said, link will be in the description. And anyway, I'm out.